All right, so we have the absolute pleasure and privilege to be able to sit down with Funcase right next to me here. For the people at home who somehow are not familiar with Funcase, could you please introduce yourself? I am Funcase, I'm English, I'm old, and I make dubstep. I think that about sums it up. <laughs> How did you get started with your DJ and producing career? My mom is a DJ and she's been DJing from the moment I was born to the moment I liked to DJ myself, which was around 18 years old. And from then I grew into DJing and learning to produce and then I did this crappy job. What track or artist inspired you to get into bass music? Um, this shows my age, but before 18 and before I was in bands and all I liked was death metal. So I hated drum and bass. No joke, my mum played it constantly, I was not a fan. And then one day I was walking past the room my mum was DJing in in the house and I heard a track called Bandwagon Blues by Twisted Individual and it kind of blew my mind. I was like, yo, and that was the moment that everything changed. And that was when I was 18, which was a long time ago. Can't wait. And this is a great segue into my next question, actually, because you, did you not start out with drum and bass? I did, I did, yeah, I did. So what, what made you make the switch to dubstep? Yeah, this is the problem, this is the problem. So uh, I used to do the drum and bass under the name DJ Dose, and uh, I was trying hard to make it in the scene. For about four or five years, I was making drum and bass. I had a bunch of vinyl releases, and I had a lot of friends in the scene who are now doing massive things like Mackie G. One day, my friend uh, tells me about this uh, genre called dubstep. I listen to it, and I'm like, nah, it's a bit slow, kind of boring. And he's like, please do, do, like a, do a style of dubstep in your own uh, production style, where you, you know, like drum and bass style, but slower. I was like, all right. So I made Gorilla Flex, so vexed, and 50 caliber, and gave it to him, and he played it on his radio show, and he freaked out. And I was like, are they good? I have no idea. I didn't even like the genre. So I was making dubstep when I didn't even like it. Did you uh, get into DJing or producing first? Technically producing, because... I used to play on the PlayStation with a with a game called Music. So I wasn't aware I liked producing. I just thought I was enjoying making these tracks on a game. How old is this PlayStation game? <laughs> is it early 2000s, probably? <laughs> probably. So how and exactly why did you start DPMO, your own label? I was frustrated with the scene for ignoring a lot of talent. There was a lot of labels and not enough releases to go around for some reason, you know? There was people like Pfizer who was killing it. Um, and there was all these names who were doing so well and I had no power to be able to go, this track's amazing, let's put it out. I was telling Circus to sign all these tracks by like Genetics, Persist at the time, and all these amazing names. And like only some of them would come out and it was frustrating me. So one day I was like, look, let's just do something and I can give these guys a platform. And then we birthed, the, the, the compilation for DPMO was the first thing that came up. So in Jerome Bass, Andy C has a compilation called Nightlife. And, there was, and it was a very prestigious compilation that everyone wanted to be on, and no one in dubstep had that. So I was like, why don't we just be the Andy C nightlife of dubstep? And that's when Deep Mo compilation was born, and then that grew into the label, and here we are. For those who are not in the know, what does DPMO stand for? Don't piss me off. Don't piss me off. <laughs> who are you uh, keeping an eye on in the future for DPMO? A lot of the guys I'm really keeping my eye on, I've kind of got them already involved in DPMO. There's some guys that obviously, you know, I've always got my eye on, like this guy, of course. Versa, obviously, you know, my child, I actually birthed him via my penis. Um, I've also got uh, Awesome Hate involved now with DPMO. Um, he's a big talent. Everyone's been telling me about him for years. And uh, yeah, I, I discovered him myself over Corona times on Spotify. There's, there's so many names, dude. I mean, we've got Bird, uh, Murder involved now in the, uh, in the thing. Bad Clat is now involved in DPMO. So yeah, man, it's, it's going to be a bright future. Fuck yeah, I'm excited for it. As a fellow label manager, how did you feel about Never Say Die closing down? Did that impact you in any way? It was sad, but the, the thing about it for me is like, I wasn't directly involved in Never Say Die like a lot of people were. I, I had a release on there, uh, actually I had, I had two releases, I had an Etic collab and a remix for Schism. And I've known Schism since the, the very beginning. So it was sad to see it go down and it's sad to see how it went, but I think that's just the, the natural evolution, man. Not everything lasts forever, you know? Like even Circus Records, when you watch Circus Records, they were the biggest thing on the planet at one point. They're not even basically not even involved in dub in uh, dubstep anymore. You know, they're, they're doing their own thing somewhere else to stay alive. Favorite DJ to go back to back with? Ooh, I mean, Cookie's obviously a pretty obvious answer. But I've done so many back to backs with him, so it's not really a fair thing. There's guys I want to go back to back with. I did a back to back at Lost Lands with Rusco. Did some DMB back then. That was fun. We both jumped around like little penguins. It was great. Um, I've always wanted to go back to back with uh, with Zomboy as well. Yeah, I don't know. It depends. Uh, I think Cookie's probably the obvious answer there. 
How did your relationship with Cookie impact your career? When you think about Circus Records, there was four of us, right? There was four main guys. There was me, Flux Pavilion, Cookie and Dr. P. Back then, there was no clicks. It was generally the wrong word, but Dr. P and Flux did back to back, so me and Cookie did back to back. So it's kind of like we're our own little groups, but we're, we're very much a family. We kind of stuck together through everything, you know? There's been highs and lows on that label. It goes deep. Doesn't matter, I'm still here, I'm still happy. But me and Cookie were kind of involved in all of it and Dr. P and Flux were involved in it too and there's been so many crazy things that have happened. So yeah, we kind of fought for each other and we've always had our own backs. And yeah, it's sad to see Cookie go, but you know. Again, life, man. Life stuff. Life stuff. That's the OGs right there. Just to have, hop back to the previous question, you mentioned you did a drum and bass back-to-back with Rusko. Last month you did a full fun case drum and bass set um, in Amsterdam for Rampage for their first time in Amsterdam. Was this your first time doing a drum and bass set full on solo for fun case and how did you how did you how did you experience it? I've done a few DMB sets for fun case actually. Um, it's my first probably in Europe. That might I might be totally wrong. Some might go, what the fuck? No, you played in this place. Yeah it's good man. I love doing drum and bass. It's always been in my it's always been my favorite genre actually. It's where it all started out, right? So uh, we have arrived at our last question here. What is next for Fun Case? I need to get a whole bunch of music out, man. There's way too many things that have been sat down doing nothing. There's way too much new stuff. There's way too many collabs I've started. I have to just go on a mad wave of finishing everything, getting an absolute bombarding wave of music out. DPMO, my child. I want to I want to take the next step with that stuff now. I want to start doing some super cool stuff. I can't say anything yet. Although, although the one thing I can say is we have a new merch line coming out. Not too soon. Maybe too soon. Maybe soon. Who knows? We've got a new uh, distributor. There, so, uh, yeah, we're just waiting to see how that formulates. Yeah, I want to take the next step with DFMO. I want to release an insane amount of music with uh, Front Case and just do better. Future looking bright. I think I can speak for myself and the viewers at home. Say so we're excited about it. Hey, James, thank you so much for sitting uh, down with us uh, tonight. Let's fucking go. <laughs>